Moving forward, we are going to now take an image and apply it as a background image. In this particular case, if I take a look at this page, this page has a series of boxes called divs. And one of the boxes that surrounds all of the other boxes is called a wrapper here. I want to kind of keep that mentally in mind. I'm going to actually go ahead and apply a page background very quickly here, but I'm going to do it incorrectly so that you can see later on why I would want to start where I'm going to eventually start. I'm going to go ahead and click on page properties and I'm going to just zip out to that background image very quickly and click OK and OK. Now what has happened here is because I applied a background image all of those container pieces are still there but they're very tough to read. So this was a design strategy that quite frankly didn't work for me. Better dis design strategy, I'm going to undo that. Better design strategy is to take this box before you apply that background and change its color to something that's going to stand out against your background so that you can then see it once that background's in place. Now of course you don't have to do that, it just makes life a lot easier. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select that wrapper and in this case the wrapper sits around all of these elements. Sometimes it's really tough to grab. Best way to do it is to come down here to this little tiny bar which is showing us our code pieces as we are clicking in and out of them. I want that wrapper. So if I click on the wrapper here I am sure to have grabbed the entire wrapper. Again that wrapper is that piece that goes around the entire page. Grabbing the wrapper at this point doesn't really make any difference. Where, where I really, really need to grab the wrapper is over here. But this definitely helps me, if I click over here, this definitely helps me see that that is indeed the piece that I want to grab. I'm going to come over here into my style sheet area and I'm going to grab the wrapper. I'm going to come down to my pencil and this time I'm going to go to its background. Keep in mind that this wrapper's only function in life is to make these elements adhere to an 800 pixel wide box as well as automatically um, size their margins. I'm going to click on this background and I'm going to click on the background color and I'm going to for the moment choose white and I'm going to click apply and OK. Now nothing significant happened here and that's fine. Didn't expect it to. But now that I can um, be assured that this particular box has a white background, I can see it once I apply all of my other background images. I'm going to go ahead and click on page properties to start applying a background image. And I'm going to come in here and notice here that right away I have all of my page defaults. The one I'm most interested in right now is this background image piece. And I can go ahead and click on browse and I have happened to have grabbed multiple different images in terms of a background from a different location prior to our starting today. I'm going to click OK and as the most simple way of doing it I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now what we can see is a background image that lays in to our web page. And I'm going to drag a preview over here and sure enough that's what it looks like and that's certainly a very very good start. Another technique we can do in terms of background images, keep in mind that background images tile left to right top to bottom in their most uh, consistent state there or the way that you would normally do it in Dreamweaver. If I go back to page properties here I can also get a little bit more specific in terms of its repeating areas. So if I wanted an image um, only to repeat on the x-axis I could click on repeat X and click OK. Now this is a little bit odd quite frankly because of this particular design. If I take a look at it here in my preview it only moves across the top because I said only do a repeat on the X axis. What I would probably do from a design perspective here is I'd go back in and change my background color and again I'm dealing with page properties not the, the properties of that wrapper and I might go to a super dark blue there 
doesn't quite work the way I would want it to because my colors don't quite match up here to here, but pretty close. At least it's a little bit um, more unified here. I'm going to also show you that I'm going to change that background color back to white just to show you what we're playing with here. I could also repeat that image on the Y axis here and once again here I have an image coming down the left hand side. This is a pretty common type of uh, design that you might see out there. You might see a lot of different things that have a decorative left hand border. There's multiple ways to do that. I happen to be doing it with a square shaped graphic here. There are also some very long thin rectangular type of graphics that get laid in as backgrounds. But generally with a patterned background such as what we are seeing right here, this background is generally going to be intended to be used as a simple repeat background which was the default to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply and OK and there is my simple repeat background on this particular page.